Back in the day when I used to answer the viewer mail, uh, one of the, the most popular was always, where's the bridge? But another popular question was always, how can I get a job at Texas Country Reporter? I don't care what it pays. I don't care. Uh, I, I don't really know a whole lot about television, but I'm absolutely willing to learn because everybody loves the show. So it's, it's one of the kind of places that uh, we get to go out on an adventure. So you're literally putting together your own little six minute movie. I think one thing that I've learned is that you can go down any neighborhood street and there's probably going to be at least a couple of really unique people who are doing something in their kitchen or their garage or their back bedroom that you will never know about, but they are interesting people and their stories are certainly worth telling. I'm Dan. Good, I'm Gene Dan. Fernandez. Nice to meet you. A man of a thousand hats, you might you say. Go. Yeah. Okay. All right, let me get these dogs out of the way. Go right ahead. Go because right ahead. So he's uh, O positive, right? <laughs> yes. What blood type are you? Uh, B. Well, no, he doesn't like that one. He just likes that one. <laughs> come on, come on. Why is it so important to remember history? When we started this program, we were all just a bunch of news guys that started it. We were looking for some way that we could exercise our craft and take pretty pictures and, you know, go out and talk to people and put it all together in a pleasing way so that people would feel good when they watched it. But by doing that, we got to feel good too. And here we are 50 years later still doing it. Does it happen very often that you get to a story and you expect it to be one thing and it turns to be something else? Oh, all the time. All the time. All the time. Pretty much every, well, most of them. You, you can come out with any number of preconceived notions about, well, oh, this story's going to be like this and like that. They completely flip on you yeah. every single time. Yeah. Very rarely do we come to a story and it's exactly what we thought. And, but Surprises. most of the time, it's a lot better than what we thought. Yeah. Minus 12 dB probably be all right, don't you think? Minus 12 dB, is that a good setting? I have no idea. You know, when I first started, I, the thing that I liked the most was we were able to go out and do a story and spend an entire day w with the people that we were doing a story on and get to know them and make, the, make a day out of it and, and be able to do what we do, do our craft, tell their story, but we got to, you know, spend the entire day doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sweet onion. You've never yes. done that? No, I don't like onions, period. <laughs> the first day I moved to Dallas in February of 1984, it was a Saturday evening, and I didn't know anybody in Dallas. I had a roommate that I'd gone, that I'd gone to college with. He turns on the television and shows me this TV show, and he just went on about this TV show. And I remember the story. It was a farm family outside of Fort Worth. Come on now. And that was in the February of 1984. And I remember thinking, wow, I kind of like that. Well, I would truly say, after seeing that TV show on my first day in Dallas, Texas, after 33 years, it still is the dream job. What a big tub. You know, everybody wants a tub like that in their house, I feel. Oh yeah, there's a bathtub down there too. Oh, dang. It sometimes does feel like whatever I would do after this wouldn't be as exciting. Cause I mean, it's fun. Like it's an actual fun job. And it's like, man, if you did anything else besides this, I just can't imagine it being as exciting and unique and different as doing this has been. But what's your frequency on there? It is 536. Oh, oh, oh. I think he almost said, what's the frequency, oh, oh. Kenneth? But he said, What's the frequency, Quentin? We don't want to get sued. No, we absolutely do not. <laughs> to me, this is a family. I think it shows how much we care about each other and in turn we care that much about the people we're doing stories on and we highlight that in them. 
That's why I say it's comfort food. I think they view us as friends. Talk about all of your achievements since, you know, starting to make your work, like your botanical garden and stuff like that. It's a relaxing job to the point where you don't think it's a job anymore because you come into work and you hear all of these stories and you get to hang out with your family basically all day and so it doesn't feel like work. It also changes like the way you view the world getting to work here and watch the show because now I'll be driving down the road looking out the window and I'll see some shabby shack on the side of the road and think I bet the person who owns that has a great story. You know, we've gone into the prisons, we've gone into the governor's mansion, behind the scenes at NASA, yeah, just all these places that we've gotten to, even stuff behind the scenes like in Big Ben, you know, taking us down roads. They don't take anybody and show us old abandoned ruins that they don't want anybody knowing about and we get to see them. And here we have something that looks a lot like a clothespin. It looks like a clothespin, but it's not. It's a C-47 hinged wood clamp. I still am amazed that I even fell into this job. I mean, 30 some odd years ago, and I remember right after I went to work for Texas Country Reporter, I was in a restaurant with some friends and I was overheard saying something by a reporter that knew that I had taken this job. And I had said, I can't believe they pay me for having this much fun. That quote got printed in the newspaper the next day. And then you transform the other branches. For me, the 22 years I've spent here have been a vacation. This is my retirement job. You just feel really alive when you're out there with the camera uh, shooting. What are you shooting? Trying to get the vehicle going across the bridge. Still, after 33 years, there's nothing better than leaving the story and driving down the highway with the windows rolled down and just thinking about what you just saw, felt, heard, that never goes away. Everyone likes a good story about someone who's doing something to change their world, even if it's a small community of people. And I think that resonates with everyone. Then we took our pencils and... What we're doing is, is trying to figure out what is it about that person that they're passionate about? What is it that feeds their soul? What is it that, that warms their heart? Share that with us and it, we all get to feel it. Now I heard that you've been wearing spurs since you were about two, is that correct? <laughs> right through the TV, somehow through the magic of television, people sitting in their living rooms for 50 years have felt those same feelings we get to feel when we're there. That's special. That should work. What is this monstrosity I'm looking at? <laughs> it's called low budget. <laughs>